Hey everybody, it's Jason. Welcome back to my world. I had a fantastic week at work, and I was going to do a video tonight on materials. I wanted to start a series of educational videos based on certain materials, the way they were used, and how they were used basically in jewelry. I decided to scratch that idea and went with this instead. So this is totally raw, unedited, and I hope it goes okay. I thank you all again for your time and your attention and your comments. It's meant the world to me. Trust me, it really has. What you're looking at in front of you are three Lucite bracelets that I constructed between 2000 and 2004. By 2005, I had moved on to other materials and other designs. And these bangles were constructed out of Lucite, which is the clear plastic material that you're seeing. And then they were drilled out and inset with sterling silver cups and then inset with colored crystals and basically rhinestones. On the inside of the bracelet, if I can flip it around this way, I was questioned by a few of you on how or if I sign my work. There is one of my signatures that I used. It was a VS inside of a triangle. The date on this one was 2000, and then the JMA signature right after that. So if you see that signature on anything, that's definitely something that I've constructed and definitely something that I've made. So if you do see that or run into that ever, that's definitely one of my creations. And again, these were just fashionable. They were relatively large in terms of their presence. Very thick walled, but then the color play and the push and pull of surface was very notable because you could see the silver bezel cups and then the colored stones. I did these in a mixture of colors and a mixture of stones, both in cut and size. So that's one of the Lucite bracelets that I did. And then these are two of the others. And the larger of the two, which this one, was a commission um, by a very close friend at the time. She was fascinated by my work, and I made this for her, and she wore it to a benefit, and it was something that I never thought I would see again, and unfortunately, um, she passed away, and it found its way back to me, and here it is today. These are acrylic. These large stones are pink acrylic, and then the body of the bracelet is, in fact, lucite again, and there are rods that are sterling silver rods that are inset, tap and dyed through the bracelet and then through the acrylic. And the epoxy, which I used to set these, has yellowed over time because, again, this was in 2000. Um, seeing it again, I wish I would have constructed this differently so that it didn't have the epoxy in place. But, again, I don't know, you know, the history of my work, once it's done, I move on to something else. So craft on this, I wish I would have improved the craft, but uh, what a beautiful bracelet nonetheless. And I don't mind that it's yellowed because that's just part of its history. So there's that bracelet. And then the last one that I have in the box right now is this bangle. And again, it's a Lucite um, domed bangle made to look like rock crystal. And then inside the bezel cups are moonstone. I'll try and get in on those so you can see them. A little bit closer there. So they are moonstone. Then they're inset in sterling bezel cups. So again, you have that optical effervescence push and pull of the surface. So they are countersunk down into the lucite. And then it, they are inset inside the plastic, basically. Um, this one is not signed. And some of them I signed and some of them I did not. Uh, there wasn't a rhyme or reason for if I signed or if I didn't. It was just basically my feelings at the time. There was a ring that I had in one of my shorts recently, and it's gotten such, you know, attention and a lot of smiles, um, a lot of um, comments. 
And it's this ring. It was a sterling silver compote that was damaged, extremely damaged, and solid sterling. And I constructed a ring that, again, I soldered onto the back of this. I wired the grapes in from behind, and then all the grapes and the leaves are wired together. And these were vintage plastic grapes from around 1960, 1965. And the plastic leaves were craft leaves from around 1970. So all wired together and assembled inside of this large sterling bowl. And then I thought, how fun would it be to make it into a ring? And so I turned it into a ring, and what a statement piece. Just fun, whimsical, not meant to be serious, but definitely meant to be hilarious. Um, And I'm quite a character in real life, but I've been playing it real serious on my channel so far. But just wait. (laughs) Um... I was also questioned about one of my videos, and this was seen nestled inside of a vase in the video. It's kind of perched on top of the vase, and it is a necklace. I'll set it there for you to take it all in. And what you're looking at is a dragonfly that was constructed by me in 2002 or 2003. Some of these pieces I would start and let them sit for a while, and then I would go back to them. As any creative person, we have that license to let things marinate, let things settle, and not force something to happen. This was a Bakelite drawer pull. So from here to here was a a Bakelite drawer pull that was drilled out here, that was the original hole. And so the drawer pull was fashioned this way. So if you could imagine it, there you put your hand here. So I cut off the end because it was broken. And then I fashioned the drawer pull into this dragonfly's body. It had that swooping elegance and, and fineness of a dragonfly's body to me. So I inset that with tiny acrylic eyes, So those little tiny eyes are, they're drilled out and then they're inset down in, inside of the Bakelite. Then I made the wings out of sterling silver. So I pierced these wings out of flat sheet and then I soldered them together inside the thorax area of the dragonfly. And then I set them on a piece of tubing. So I soldered that onto tubing that was then riveted into the dragonfly's body. So that's how the wings were attached. And then I went in and I had to give the dragonfly some elegant legs. So I drilled out the side, I inset in sterling silver, they were soldered, and then inset inside of the Bakelite. And to give it a crowning jewel, if you will, and something very important, is this large faceted Moldavite stone. They customarily do not facet Moldavite, but this is, in fact, Moldavite, and you can do a whole bunch of research online about Moldavite because it is a very powerful, powerful stone that um, sometimes is a little much for me, so I don't wear it very often, but I wanted that special stone to then be bezel set into an open back bezel that I sought out by hand, then soldered into the dragonfly's little hands that are there, and then... I wanted something more vintage for the chain, and I also wanted this to be able to be dis that I could disconnect this. So I put little jump rings here, the old C class jump rings, to then take this off so I could either have a sculpture or I could wear it on a hat. Uh, any, there were multiple ways to wear this, but I wanted to construct this chain, so I just used vintage Bakelite beads. So I did a three plus one design on the chain and then finished it by oxidizing the chain. And the wings were also oxidized at the time to make them look older or more vintage. I never wanted to make reproduction items, but I also wanted my pieces to look like they had been here before I created them. And uh, the magic on this was and is just breathtaking when you look at the wings and the mixture of materials. And I kind of always tried to push myself as an artist to mix different materials together. 
And it is quite the challenge to make things go together appropriately and to use the right colors, the right textures. It was definitely... I was always up for the challenge, I should say, and I enjoyed this and making this very much. But someone asked me uh, to see this up close. They saw it perched inside of a vase in one of my videos. And so here it is up close for you to enjoy. And my inspiration, um, I just brought two pieces to show the inspiration that I had. This is a Bakelite brooch. It is a three-quarter view frog. There's only a few of these known in the world. I think to date there's only three other known of this exact brooch. And it was over dyed years ago. So that was the resin wash that was over the Bakelite surface. And it has completely worn off the front of it. So someone wore this a great deal and wore that green color right back down to the yellow color of the Bakelite. It has oxidized beautifully over the years. And there was just something about his face and his gesture and his chubbiness that just got me completely crazy. Uh, this was in a national auction, I believe that was 2007 or 2008. I won't mention the catalog that it was on, but I did have to pay an exorbitant amount because it was overexposed in terms of the audience that was going after it. So it was definitely not a bargain, but something that I'm so glad that I took the chance to buy because he's just wonderful. And I used this kind of design and, and this mindset in my work, and you can definitely tell the inspiration that was there. The necklace here is an original Martha Sleeper necklace. And again, I briefly touched on Martha Sleeper as a person and as an artist. This was the very, very well-known and super whimsical cigarette and matchstick necklace. For those people who don't like Bakelite, I would challenge them not to like this. <laughs> there would be no way that you wouldn't at least smile. You may not understand the material, and I can forgive that, but you definitely have to consider the whimsy in this necklace. So lit cigarettes and then matchsticks with colored Bakelite tips that are completely hand-constructed. Be very careful if you're going after these pieces specifically, there are a great deal of reproductions out there. So please pay attention to the findings. Please pay attention to the oxidation and the wear patterns. And please pay attention to the way that these are put together and this almost glow or halo around where the matchstick heads go onto the matchsticks themselves. So don't always listen to a seller who's trying to promote their item as authentic or real or old or vintage. You've got to do your research and be super careful because if you're going to spend $5,000 on a necklace, you better hope that you're getting a real one. Um, and that necklace did cost me, I believe it was $5,200 back in the day. Um, again, values have trailed off and we will get into that in later videos. That's not what I wanted to do here to to discuss values, but at least you have a peek at what I was inspired by in my art and kind of where I feel my some of my designs originated from. So at least you can see that as inspiration. That takes me to a necklace that I created that was never a real Bakelite creation from the 40s or 50s. They had vegetable necklaces and fruit necklaces, but this one was was not ever uh, a known design, shall, shall I say. So don't look for carrots as a necklace, at least this complex or in this patterning. And what I did is I found old Bakelite rod stock and I routered and sanded and filed and worked it down by hand to then make these carrots. And I wanted a, I, I said at the time, jokingly, of course, because of my sarcasm, it gets the better of me sometimes, I wanted a 15 carat necklace. So essentially, I had a 15 carat necklace when I wore this. And, you know, my humor sometimes <laughs> can be really you know, wrong. But in, in this instance, um, this was just very much fun to make. So I made the Bakelite carrots, I drilled, I filed, I sanded, I give them, I gave them the texture of real carrots and the shape of. Then I made sterling silver jump rings and sterling silver rods that are then epoxied into the top of the carrot, sterling silver jump rings. And I always 
always used old original celluloid chains. So I always used the celluloid chains that the original necklaces came on just as a finishing touch to make it more authentic. And then I hand fabricated and hand forged a sterling silver clasp because the jump rings back then in the 40s, they had a tendency to wear out. The brass jump rings had a great tendency uh, to give up after a while. So I just wanted to make my own clasp so I knew it would function. And then in between, these were just parts that were Bakelite components that were also used on vintage necklaces, but again, not in this construction. So it was a kind of a piece that I made that I felt uh, took over where the Bakelite craftspeople left off in the 1940s and 50s. So again, not a reproduction, but definitely something that I felt that where they left off, Jason took over in a way. Um, and just fun and whimsical and wonderful to wear. Just very fun. And, and it just, it made me happy to, to wear it. Um, and I love it still to this day. The piece that makes me a little bit emotional and a little bit bothered, I would say, is this piece. Um, you might ask yourself, what exactly are you looking at? And I sure hope that YouTube doesn't pick this as my thumbnail, <laughs> because what a video people wouldn't watch. So this is a cicada brooch that I constructed in 2001. I think it, nope, this was 2000. So again, I signed here, I signed here, and then I signed 2000. Sterling silver back sheet. The green is just acrylic. So what you're seeing is acrylic. And I had pierced out these lucite wings. And they were bezel set in these cups uh, that were then threaded to the cicada's body. And I was always fascinated by scarabs and cicadas. Uh, as a child, I was, I was fascinated by when they would come out of their cocoons and their shells, and they would leave their little shells behind where they came out of. And I was fascinated by those. And I used to go around and collect them. And I would put them in a jar and I'd put them in my room. So one of my first collections, if you would think of it that way, one of my first collections as a child. Um, and um, I put in moonstone eyes in bezel cups. And then these raised sterling silver bezels uh, were hand constructed by me as well. So they were basically three sided, a top sheet, the uh, rounded part, the rounded portion, and then the back sheet. And I left these open to then inset the wings into. And unfortunately, I had made this for a friend, um, and she did pass away. And um, it was found this way in her estate. So something had went really wrong. Uh, this was the only the second one that I, I had ever created. And I'm going to resurrect this. I'm, I'm going to go back into my studio. And when I need some time to myself to heal myself, I'm going to heal this piece as well. So there's a reason for me to have this, to show this. And I'll show you the original, which is complete. And this is the original which is the complete one. And this is what the green one would have looked like. This was the first one I constructed. So the body is black Bakelite. And then on the inside, again, we have the sterling silver bezel cups. And each sterling silver bezel cup contains these pierced out, almost diaphanous wings that look like real cicada wings. But in fact, they're just plastic that I so carefully drilled a hole um, in this area. And then I sawed out with a jeweler saw. And then I filed and sanded down each opening, filed and sanded down the edge of the wings. And again, on the back, it's sterling silver. It's signed with my VS in an applied triangle. So if you see that mark, that's definitely a Jason original. And then sterling silver findings on sterling silver sheet. Um, I could, you know, I, I could talk about what this means to me for a very long time. But I would just rather show you and, and have you enjoy this as what it is. I was looking at the work of René Lalique, who was an Art Nouveau jeweler and an Art Nouveau artist that's probably the most well-known of the Art Nouveau movement. And I was looking at his pieces, and seemingly all were oversized, but so incredibly crafted that made it look like a human didn't 
make them. And this was what I was looking at at the time that I was putting these together. So again, this is the one that's complete as the testament to what the green one looked like. And again, within maybe a month or two months, I don't force my work. I, I let it... I let it decide when it's ready um, and I'll know and I'll restore the green one to the, the grandness of the black one. Um, and I just felt like I had to show these tonight. I'm not sure exactly why, but I just felt like they needed to be seen and I hope you love them very much. And I would love to hear your comments on these in the comment section. The other one, let me scoot this little guy out of the way. The other one that is the larger version of those that I didn't feel was successful, so I almost didn't want to show it, but it is successful on its own right, is this brooch. And it's approximately nine and a half inches across, so of course it's not really going to fit in the frame as well as I'd like it to. The wings are acrylic, the body is acrylic, and then inset with rhinestones. The wings are inset with enamel. So those are actually enamel and sterling silver. And then the eyes are hematite, and they're set in bezel cups. And the plastic body and plastic wings are completely cut out by hand, by a jeweler saw, by me. And I just wanted something colorful and something sure to be noticed. I inset the pin back from behind as well that went right sunk into the body for a great connection. I'm kind of a, a very particular person when it comes to craft. So the wings are actually tap and dyed out with sterling wire. And then that is passed through the body and then riveted in place. So those aren't glued in place. And that's further proof by being able to move these wings as you're wearing it. You can actually position the wings to where you want them so they can overlap, they can stay together, and you can make them appear that the dragonfly is ready to take off or in flight, whatever you'd prefer. So that was just one of the fun ones that, again, I didn't think was ultimately successful. So I really didn't finish the edges on it. I kind of gave up after I got it together that far. I had worn it a few times, but very impractical because of how large it is. But that's something that my work is known for. That concludes this um, video. I'm not going to drone on and on. Uh, my rings, of course, you always ask. This one is an aquamarine with diamonds and um, rubies and set in sterling silver. It is from India. And I fell madly in love with it at a show. And then this one's one of the Bakelite ones that I created. It is purple and cream. So it's an unusual color for... Um, that era of, of material. But again, I constructed this one in 2010 is when I made this one. And again, when I put it together, the Bakelite was white and uh, then it ages to a beautiful yellow over time. So something that I adore. That concludes my video. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Bye-bye.